So things like that that people can check out, take home, use for the weekend, and things like that. So how does this fit into the library's video information? Um, provide materials. It's just a different kind of materials. And you said the Friends of Library provide money to do what? What, what are they? Well, they're giving us, out of the money that they're giving us, they're giving us a lump sum next year. Mm -hmm. um, Six thousand. So out of that, we're gonna we had kind of earmarked three thousand of that for our, to start our library. That's to purchase items that we're gonna loan to people at no charge. Right. Uh, are they also paying for the labor to administer the program? Um, well, that would be cataloging our cataloging for So somebody will keep track of them, have to follow up, people have to return the goods, all those kinds of things. Um, I don't expect it to be an issue. Um, it never has been at any of the other libraries that we've had can do that. Um, but if it is, it's certainly something that people can actually. You said some, there's some equipment involved that people can borrow? Um, yeah. yeah. Equipment. Um, at other libraries, um, Rochester Hills has an extensive collection. They actually have a list on their website. Um, we had, at other libraries, we had like a stud finder. We have um, a voltage meter that people can borrow to see what kind of finds, how much energy we find to see. More like it's not a tool that it's one time use. Like, why am I going to go out and buy a $50 mm -hmm. item when I can rent from the library? Mm -hmm. It is true. Or, 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 or I'm just that. wondering how it fits in your, you know, in the library. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is materials. We have solar cameras and microphones. And mm -hmm. Well, and you could have those. I know they've had sewing machines. Mm -hmm. um, you could have cameras. Some libraries do like chainsaws. I don't know that part. But even so, <laughs> even just renting out, you know, we um, we loan out puzzles. You know, that's not sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But now we're doing construction business and well, all other kinds of things. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's some liability things that we need to keep in mind as well. Um, so I don't know how our construction will be equipment and you know, tools and that kind of stuff we'll have to be careful of. So this will have to be maintained somewhere. Is there a room for this or the stuff will be stored? Um, where our graphic novels used to be, on the front end of the fireplace, mm -hmm. that whole section where the newspapers are is empty right now. So we can put it right there. And then something that have to maintain the inventory, I have to imagine? Um, not any more so than the books and the other materials. Mm -hmm. So it'd be in the same system or a different system? Same system. Yeah. So people come and reserve something that will get the stuff on your next week and somebody we can, can track that? Yeah, we haven't really gotten that far into it. We're going to allow reserves on it or if it's just a first come for yeah. um, But if it's in our regular system, we should be in the special plan. Okay. Was this part of our strategic plan or is this something that was just uh, imagined? No, it's not on the strategic plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I speak on it? This is libraries of the future, encompassing the entire community. And, you know, to, uh, to me, it kind of goes along with adding a maker space to a library that might have like a 3D printer or different things like that. Um, I think the big question here, Jan, is that um, we are we as a board are just hearing about this and yet it sounds like it's all planned and ready to go and we've had absolutely no input and i have an issue with that it was in the budget it was in the notice i know we had talked about it, but we haven't seen a plan or anything uh, we don't have an official plan um, until we get the um, we're talk about it and kind of have a running list of things that we're thinking about that other people see at other libraries, but um, I have a way to make sure we can have So when they raise money for the library, do you think this is the best use of that money? Of all I the do. things we could be doing? I do. I think it's a really good use of money. Mm -hmm. I really do. Personally, I don't have very many events during the summer at my house, and I could definitely use borrowing the corn hall and <laughs> Because so buying something like that is just going to sit in quite dust in my place. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I, I looked at it as a service, another service. 
you know, the past, you know, now. No, and I don't have an issue with that. I'm just saying, you know, you and I were in a meeting today, and I'm sitting there, and they're talking about all these things. They're talking about a logo that I've never seen. They're talking about a, a you know, a new library thing and a library of things. And, and I'm sitting there going, wait, aren't I a board member? And I, the staff is all, oh, yeah, 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 they all know about it. And I knew nothing about any of these things. It's using staff time. Library. It's Resources. like we're like uh, we're not even part of what's going on in the library any longer. That's how I feel. Well, the logo is in the strategic. I know it is, yeah. but when they work on these things, usually, you know, they come to us. I mean, how we've worked in the past, and I'm sorry, but I have to go back to that. We're like this is our community library. We are volunteering our time to be here to have impact, to make this the best thing we can for our community, and yet a logo, which to me is something very important because it presents the library how we want to present it. And we don't even see this until somebody says, oh yeah, well, this is what's been picked. We didn't get to look at colors, we didn't get to look at designs, we didn't get any input whatsoever. It's already done. And I was sitting in that meeting going, where have I been? I don't know about any of these things. And, and the Library of Things was mentioned, and, and it was said, oh yeah, well that's starting in January, really? Well, what are you gonna tell the board about that? Is there a plan? Do we know what's gonna be purchased? Do we know whether the attorney has looked at the liability? Do we know what space is gonna be used? What kind of staff time is going to re be required? You know, it's all of these kind of things, and we're not being part of that at all. And I have to wonder, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be a rubber stamp. We should have input on these types of things. And what I'm learning is part of a bigger uh, initiative that I've never heard of before. You've never heard of is, it, is that what you said? Yeah. You've never heard of yeah. Okay. So what is this bigger initiative? And how does this fit into that? Um, yeah. Any other comments? Other decisions? Well, I guess I'm just, I don't know. I, I feel like it's still, the, like as far as the, the, the logging of items and things like that. Um, it's just in the thinking stage. And when when the money becomes available, that's when I think that's when we get involved in the planning stage. So I I guess I didn't foresee it as any problem because it's one of those things that until we until when or if we get money from Friends of the Library, that's when what items we're gonna be buying, how we're gonna do it, talking to the attorney, talking to you know, that's when all those things, all those steps start taking place. So I guess I just didn't foresee it as being a problem. I think it's a wonderful idea when I heard about it. How come did you hear about it? Um, I don't know. I thought we brought it up at a meeting. I, if somebody was talking about it, and I, and I asked and I asked about it, and then we just I, I'm just saying, you know, somebody that just said, well, you know, we're working on this, and we're starting to put a list together, you know, just a few comments about what's going on. You know, all of the staff knows, and they could be talking to the community, and somebody in the community could walk up and say, oh, I hear you're going to have the library things. Oh, really? Well, I haven't heard that. I haven't sit on the board. Yes, I don't It may have been brought up, but not that it's going to start in January, and that plan's already being made. I had no clue. And I had no clue. I knew this was on our strategic plan, but... You know, don't you think it's important that, that we could have some input? Doesn't our, doesn't our opinion count for anything? Of course it does. I would hope so. But I'm just having a hard time determining because the Brain and Reads program, um, I mean, there's a lot of things on the strategic plan that the board hasn't really talked about or been concerned with or needing more information on. And so I'm, I'm having a hard time what things you guys want to know more about and what things that you don't. If it's on a strategic plan, the strategic plan is done at the end of this year. Um, so obviously we're working on it because we wanted to follow the 
goals was accomplished. Um, okay. we, and we just brought it up in the strategic plan on the board, the strategic plan updates, and then we had asked. So, uh, I understand Cheryl's feelings because I, and these particular items are, are not just the issue. I, I think I get, um, you know, I, I get the, the Friday reports and I always read the director's report and, and all of those and, and no place did I see, you know, we're working on the logo, we have, you know, the final draft, we're, we're ready to go forward with it. Um, it. It seems as if these things are happening, but somehow they're not getting talked about in the places that we go to get information. So when it comes to us, you know, this is the logo, this is the one that's been decided. You know, we, I personally feel, um, kind of left out of the information flow. Um, and as we've said before, you know, this board has had to be very involved for a long time. It's the way we choose to um, operate because it is a small community, because we are very much in, involved. Um, and it, it seems that we've lost that information flow that we're used to having. You know, this is what we're working on, this is what's coming up, so that when, you know, um, a logo arrives, it, we had a chance to, to have input. Or when, you know, the, Whatever, whatever. In other words, just the fact that it was on the strategic plan or the, the strategic plan doesn't mean that we know what's happening unless we're we're advised. And in general, we're feeling, I'm feeling, kind of left out of the loop um, until you know it's a fait accompli, and that's not the way. I choose to be involved in this library. Okay. Any other comments? I guess I have one. Um, and I'm learning constantly. I'm a new president, I'm going to learn, believe me. But I, I, I feel like that this was presented tonight, so now we know. But the board's primary concern is financial. So as far as picking colors for logo, I guess I can trust the staff. It's just an example, Jan, oh, of okay. us not having input on things. I mean, I think this is important. This is how our library is presented to our community. So it's of importance. It's you not know, whether it, it's not whether you're putting, you know, a new chair in. This this is this is something very important, and yet we had no input input on it. So whether we like it or not, we've already paid for this. This is what's done. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were saying this is what the, the staff has picked. You're presenting these. To us, so and and nothing has been finalized at this point. So if we don't like this, she presented the other options too. We can actually there's other you know there's light colors, dark colors. What's to stop us from saying at this point? Because it was presented to us and said, here's what we did, and then she went on to the next item on her list. We weren't asked for. Our you know, are we going to have a discussion? Are we going to approve it? Are we going to do anything? It was just 
here's what we've done and let's move on. Okay, but it hasn't been finalized. So if well, it's, it's not in use. use. It's not in use. No, but I, I feel like we're doesn't like it. We can just say that now. Well, yeah, and then spend more money. The money's already been spent. Okay, and I guess I, I have one more comment. As far as the maker, the, the um, library of things, um, that money would be coming out of the FOL that they give us in January. It isn't spent yet. This is a wish list. Um, I would suggest go on some of these other library sites like Rochester and see more what it's all about. But this really is the future of libraries. Not, not that we're getting away from books at all. Not that we're getting away from media. But to add um, a library of things is um, the future. One of the futures of libraries. I understand that that's something we should have significant involvement in. Sure. There are other libraries in our area that um, they want to raise significant amounts of money to have community centers. It kind of be the place where everybody goes for community meetings and all this kind of stuff. That may or may not be our role. And I guess my point is, just the first time I've heard of this tonight, mm -hmm. it sounds like plans are in motion, they've got money earmarked already, and it's going to take staff time from our library to administer this. Should we have some discussion about it? That's all we're asking for okay. is to be part of the discussion. Right, right, I agree. And that was my part. <laughs> Any other? Uh, I have comments? Comments. one comment just to make on that. The other side of that is that this is being funded by the friends. So we have the materials to be, are. Right. So we have to be sort of careful in that if that's how the friends would like to, you know, spend the money that they're donating to the library, you really don't get a say. Well, they haven't said that. They're no, just no, donating it with no requirements on how it's spent. Okay. okay. It's, I, new this, it's new this year how they're doing it. Okay. I just, you know, from oh, I agree with you. you they know, said the friends, if, if the friends want to do that, we don't get to. Oh, I agree. Right. Okay. I agree. I'm, I'm just saying. Especially if they want to administer it, right? You track the records, you know, find out who's. Um, oh, yeah, the but they haven't so, said that. They're you know, just. Money. Right. Well, those are going to involve policies that we have to approve before you any know. of this stuff can I be hope so. implemented here. Right? I mean, I would hope so. Yeah. Well, so on another subject, if I, can, <laughs> I do have something about the director's report that I'd like to say. <laughs> um, the first one, the, 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 the I, I talked to Laura a little bit about this earlier today, but the um, the quiet area. Uh, I really hope we can find some potential grants because to do this. Because in my new position as an interventionist with a school, I have seen kids sitting at the Detroit Public Library on, on a class Zoom and not being able to engage because they can't talk in the library. They got a headset on, but they can't engage. Yeah. And, and that is because they, they're in an area, for whatever reason, they can't afford a Wi-Fi. We're in areas we have dead zones and people are on hotspots. So I just think that this would be a fabulous thing to have, a, to have an individual quiet area for study, for if, they, if we had kids that couldn't be, they're on a hotspot that's intermittent, they can't be on a virtual class that they can come into their local library and have it and not disrupt the other patrons. So I just like to say that if we can find the, the grant money for that, I think it would yeah. be an amazing mm -hmm. offer to and Two them. months ago, I walked the floor into those areas, and I thought that, that was a good idea as well, at least to seal off one of them. This FOL money could be one fourth of the cost of that. That's what I'm saying is this is the best use of our money to get swing machine or whatever that you want to loan out and have that kind of a program as opposed to making something useful. And I would I would say interview those interview those libraries that have them and see if they're successful and if they're bringing traffic into the library because if it's bringing traffic into the library then they're seeing other programs that are being offered and they're engaging with staff and so I would say absolutely let's interview those other libraries and say is it bringing traffic into your library to have these services on offer? Just like the hotspot, you know. Well, and I think that could be part of our future discussion about that. Mm -hmm. So 
So if anybody feels like it's their thing that they want to look at on the board or anything else, I'd say call up another library and take the initiative on interviewing them. Okay, any further discussion? I have one more question. Can you read me the response on the parking lot again? I wasn't sure what it, because the fan was still going. Um, of what he's going to talk about yeah. in December. Um, he said, to share more information in terms of draft plans and contract book. So he is going to bring a draft plan? Yes, that's the plan. Okay. The plan is a plan. So, so, and, and you said there's a possibility we might get it earlier? Hopefully. Okay. And as soon as I get it out, I'll do Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, financial officer, Cheryl. No, wait. Jay. <laughs> Whoa, I made a mistake. Jay. Okay. <laughs> I can just sit down. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so on page six and seven, we have the check register for October. And um, you'll see in there, um, toward the bottom on the right side on page six, uh, it says raising standing amount amount thirty thousand dollars. I believe that's the request from the township for us to uh, keep an extra thirty thousand dollars in our checking account for the time being. So that's what that was for. And then down on the right, the third from the bottom, you'll see the no act and cross one or two um, invoices that Laura mentioned that uh, came through this last period. The balance sheet and income statement. Page. Um, you want the can, you, can, can you go back to that uh, thirty six thousand? The raising is standing amount for thirty thousand. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I I see yeah. who it is, but I'm not. Well, I'm not going to speak to it. The thirty Do any um, 
budget adjustment so that we're within budget for year end? I'd rather do that at our November meeting if we can look everything over and because I'm just looking at, and it's not a big item, but it is a cost center. If you look at the bank credit card fees, we're at 94%. What we don't want is to have anything over budget by year end, because then that shows up on our audit. Most, most of the other, it's on page 11, um, 20. It's just, you know, I, I, just to make sure that we're well within the budget. So if we need any budget amendments, they should come to us in November. So, Cheryl, does that include, uh, so public utilities, waste and recycling, uh, 18, number 919, there's 125% there. I mean, are those the kinds of things that you're talking about? Well, what we're looking at, if you look at that one in particular, you're looking at the total for public utilities, which is now at about 72%. Okay. So what we need to budget to are those totals for each of these cost centers. Okay. So, it's so even if there's one line. in there that's over, okay. that's okay. All right. I just want to make sure that if there's anything they know is coming up that's a bigger okay. payment that might take a cost center over, okay. that we address that in November. Okay, so we are looking at the total for each. Yes. Right. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah. And we should be, I mean, everything looks pretty good now, but I just don't know if what's coming up, you know, if there's any quarterly payments or any of that kind of thing that's coming up, because we should be at about, 83% right now. Sorry, I'm taking over, Jay. <laughs> I, I didn't even talk to you about that, but yeah, we need to make sure that the budget, we're gonna be within budget by year end. On, on every cost one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now you can take your job. <laughs> All right. Well, while she's looking that over, uh, on page 12, uh, you'll see the total discussed we want to approve is 103,000. Maybe as opposed to policy. 
possibly, because it's in, it's in the emergency binder. We just didn't need that needed to be listed here. Um, so I it's just look. in the procedure for the emergency binder that it's in there? Possibly, I'd have to look to see. Okay, I'm not gonna no, I'm not that. approve it, I just wondered if you know, it was something that we always kept updated.
Sure. <laughs> um, I had a question about this imagination library. If I, I guess I was confused, so I looked it up because I didn't know anything about it. You know, so I wanted to, it sounded cool, and I wanted mm -hmm. to know what it was. Why does the why does that fall giving three hundred dollars if Fort County Community Foundation is supposed to be funding this? Do you want to speak on that one? Sure. Um, they came to us. They have to have so much money in their key for our patrons. So each area has to have a purse of money to cover the patrons that are using the service. So our library has been promoting it. Sean was on board for that program to get us on, to get our kids involved in this. Um, so they were short on the money that they needed to have. So they came, they went to the VA, they went to a bunch of different local organizations to see if they could get some funding. Um, so the prize was on the list, so they came to the and she gave a really nice presentation on the program and the history of the program and the life that's kind of in our area. So the friends chose to Wasn't it 57 kids from mm -hmm. this library so yeah. far? And the $300 was sponsored to each So only two children out of the 57 that were signed up get anything? Mm -hmm. oh, no, they, no, the rest of the money will come from the purse that they have and the rest of the donations that they receive. So all the kids will be covered? Yes. Okay, that's mm -hmm. what I was just wondering. I was confusing. Yeah. Well, when you sponsor a child, you're sponsoring them uh, for five years. That's why the three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. because they get a book every month. Okay. So yes. what happens if more than the fifty-seven children sign up from our area? They said that I think she said they never turn down a child. They would find money. Okay. They asked Al. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we advertise that in any of our stuff? Like, it's on our website. Is that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's on uh, some Facebook posts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that, that's it. Once I looked it up, because I wasn't familiar with it, I thought it was a cool idea. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Jill? No, I'm good. Fair enough? No. Okay. Heather? Susan? I'm good. And I'm good. Okay. Well, I um, student liaison. Okay. Um, Taylor is n not with us this evening. Um, she has been so involved in um, her college prep and senior activities and that kind of thing. Um, I, I think we need to kind of look at this program a little more thoroughly. Mm -hmm. um, somehow it hasn't worked out the way I envisioned it. I think that Susan and I are both um, disappointed um, and we're, we're just not quite sure how to move forward because um, we, we were hoping Taylor would identify somebody you know who would be interested but, uh, again. So at this point, um, I, I think um, we need to take up a, a, a new look. Um, Susan and I will get together and talk about you know, what we would like to propose moving forward. Um, I, I think so far it's not been a successful program. We would like to give it another shot with some new ideas and we'll come back to the board um, with our um, thoughts on, on how to move forward. And anybody with ideas, call I, us, text us, and <laughs> let us know what you think. Um, I just wanted to to suggest maybe, because we have five kids on the junior advisory board now. I read that in the, in the notes there. So maybe there's one of them. Maybe, um, and Susan and I had talked about it a little bit earlier today. You know, maybe if um, we've got these five kids who are pretty interested in what's going on, maybe one of them would want to just report 
you know, to the board. Kind of what is that chain advisory board? I don't know what it is. It's, it's I read about it. By us. It's, well, that's all I know. It's, it's, it's over over there. There. But, No, I read it in here, and I'm like, okay, what is that? Because I thought we couldn't get enough teams, and they said they had to include the five, but it's different. It's the team advisory board. We just, with the newer staff, um, Rebecca, particularly, has been really good about asking to get us any kind of library that we're interested in. And she got back to the center. So we struggled and struggled and struggled to get people signed up. And what age ranges um, are we talking about? There is an age range. I think it is 6 to 12. Okay. So it's a little bit broader. Than so that is done. different than what we were trying to recruit? Uh, I think we lowered it, the age, a little bit. I no, but I mean whatever that teen advisory board is going to do, that's different than what the student liaison. What would you say the TAP's objective is? Their objective is to help us determine programming and activities that will bring the teens into the library. We're going to ask them. Isn't that the on. same thing about what you're doing? I think there's a lot of cross-referencing across boundaries there. So yeah, I think if we had a senior or a junior on a their age race of the volunteers, but if maybe one of the older ones would be interested in reporting to us what, what's going on, I think that that would be a great way, and we, we want to discuss it further, but I think that'd be a great way to update the board on the team. Yeah, you know, it seems like you're both going at it the same. It feels like it. Well, I, I think the, the original idea uh, was to have a um, an older student who would um, not just bring ideas about um, library, but about um, the role of the library in the, the community, in other words, um, as opposed to, you know, assisting what's already existing would come with some higher level ideas. Um, and somehow we have it. But maybe work with, with the same group and try and kind of and, put and that, that together. That might very well be the way to go at this point. I don't know, Susan and I will. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. The next meeting we can do that. We yeah. have the first meeting schedule, so I'll let you know. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Um, advocacy. We um, met with the <coughs> advocacy and outreach staff committee today. Um, because they had started working on a video which we wanted and so I asked if we could start meeting with them. So we kind of met to go over some of the criteria for the video and this is to do about a 10 minute video for us as board members or Laura or whoever might be attending, you know, a rotary meeting or something, they ask for speakers. So we're thinking about a 10 minute video plus about five minutes that would allow for question and answer period because usually they want the speaker to take up about 15 minutes. So they're gonna start putting some stuff together, start showing us little clips to see if it's kind of like what we want. And it's mainly just to highlight all the different services that the library offers to the community. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people out there don't really realize all the things that are being offered. Who would present this? Well, to go to like Rotary or someplace like that, it would be one of the board members or Laura's, what I was thinking. Um, they're also going to use part of it for social media. They would then cut it down. You know, they might do a 30 second advertisement for OTV or they might do a one minute something on, I don't know, TikTok or whatever those things are, or Facebook mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever. But the longer one, one would be available to us to use if we were going out to speak at any community groups. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, present at a township meeting or something. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? So we'll be working on that. <coughs> 
They had set an internal plan of about February, so we'll see, um, to kind of, they wanted to bring it out in February, call it Why You Should Love Your Library, and kind of tie it into, you know, February, Valentine's Day, all that stuff. So. Okay, um, finance? Just uh, being near the end of the year, and uh, I'm sure our CPA is going to be meeting with the staff and uh, doing the year of adjustments, getting ready for that, so the accountants can begin the review probably what, in February. Start their audit. Is that about right? Yeah, I think they gather. Isn't that Kathleen around February that they start to ask you for information? Yeah. I was unclear. Uh, does our CPA do the uh, appreciation adjustments, or is that something the accountants are going to do? Yeah. yeah. This year is a little different. <laughs>
flow programs to be able to use that story time room again because um, in September I use this room and so many of the children are, are on the spectrum or um, this room is way too big and it was just, it wasn't a good thing. And so um, I just asked, you know, could we, I cleaned up the story time room, the area and made it be usable. And um, Laura and Alyssa said, you know, sure that we could use it. And it's a great, it's so child friendly. Yeah. And um, so it's wonderful to be able to use uh, that room again. Yeah, I'm glad to hear The second it. grade class was here today and they just absolutely loved it. So it's a good resource. And then that frees up this room too for, um, you know, other people that want to reserve the room. And I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, because we had talked about it before and we still weren't using it. And I was like, oh, we need to use that room. <laughs> but it's, it's just uh, 10 times better for especially for the preschool classes that yeah. come over and the children have special needs. Right. Well, um, thank you for cleaning it out. December 8th is <laughs> going to be the special needs Santa and that's the room that we're going to use because they really need, you know, a small intimate area that with less distractions. Nice. Awesome. And it'll be great as the outreach person that I coordinate, you know, all my outreach you know, with using this room, like I said, now it's it'll be um, easier, be seamless. I won't have to worry about checking to see, you know, what's in here. So mm -hmm. it's a great use of space. So thank you to Laura and Alyssa for um, allowing me to do my outreach programs. Mm -hmm. In reach outreach. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. That's important. Cheryl, anything else? No, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> um, glad you're here, Fran. Uh, what, and I'm always amazed by all the things that you do, but very specifically, this uh, the very last bullet where you talk about um, being involved in the VFW's Patriot Pen Asset Contest. Yeah. Is there some way that we can get more involved in that? I and I I. I don't know how much of that is your volunteer time and you... Oh, it, it's part of my library work okay. historically for probably 25 years now. Um, I've worked closely with the VFW and so they automatically come and they ask me to um, judge the Patriots Pen Contest. There were 18 um, essays this year. And um, Robin Lachlan, she also is a judge as a community member. And um, so it's, um, it's a big honor to, to judge it. And are you saying you may want to judge it sometime? No, no. I, I, I'm saying I would like to see the library be a bigger part. In other words, maybe displaying the winning essays uh, talking about um, their essays they go on to the districts and then on to the states okay so um, and it's uh, I don't want to say it's confidential but like you can't know the students names when you're reading them um, so but there is if you're interested there is an award ceremony that I'll be attending I don't know if I put the date in there but it's um, <laughs> Wednesday, December 14th, and it's going to be at the Old Town Hall. I can let you know. Um, but it is wonderful. They win scholarship money. So it's, um, you know, when you read these, you want to read them closely and really choose the top four that are the very best because they're going to go on and they are receiving money for their essays. But it is run through Brandon schools, um, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Um, it's, it's, they write the essays with the help of their teachers. Mm -hmm. nice. mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, no, I'm fine. Okay. Um, you know, I'm just always overwhelmed. 
homes when I read all of these amazing things. I've been signing my kids up for all of the different programs, and they're really excited for some of the stuff that's coming up in the winter. So, um, so thank you for all of our staff. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Susan? Um, in the last one, I tell you, I just got every one of them you guys just. That's okay. That's okay. It takes the pressure off. I was going to talk about displaying the essays, and I understand the confidentiality. Um, I mean, I can talk to Dennis Hoffman, um, even if their names aren't on it. The reason I yeah. here, here's my experience is, as probably everybody in this room knows, I'm heavily involved with the Open Common Fair. And when you go into the Alice Bar and they have essays, and I will take time, and they, the kids put them in, uh, you know, little pockets so you can turn the pages. And I sit and I read them. It's it's amazing what you know the level of writing that some of these kids have and things like that, and the time they put into them. Just to have that out, of, even if it's a copy, out on display and say, look what our kids are doing. Um, yes, I will definitely. I'll contact them tomorrow about that. If if that and would be okay. It doesn't have to have their name on it. I think it just would be kind of cool for our patrons and even other students. To so I guess we could that. get copies of the four that are going on to the state. I mean, to the district level. We could right. get copies of those. So I will um, talk to Dennis Hoffman tomorrow. I'll give him a call and okay. check into that. And I was, I was just kind of curious because it's been a long time since I've had a kindergarten. <laughs> um, what are, you said after promoting uh, promotion of dedicating stories to, I'm going to probably not do a very good job. I was trying to, sorry, oh, class? Yeah. I was trying to think of a way that maybe we could get more interest in Dial's story and its buy-in, you know, so I asked the teachers, I said, oh, how about if I record a special story for your class, you know, and then they sent that phone number um, to all of the families, and then the families, you know, a lot of the families, not all of them, I was hoping it would, I mean, 33 is good compared to, I think it was 14 or 15 before, but um, so this time as an experiment, again, I'm um, recording four stories instead of just three, and dedicating them to four different teachers. Oh, and so it's specialized targeted to that class, right? Mm -hmm. oh, that's very, very good. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Awesome. Okay, um, and obviously wonderful uh, activities going on here, but I especially wanted to congratulate Fran for Citizen of the Year mm -hmm. with two lovely letters that were included from uh, John Riley and Alyssa Slotkin. Um, congratulations! <laughs> I was very humbled and honored to you uh, be selected for that. But um, I love what I do so much, and then to win an award like that was, you know, um, just made me speechless, which doesn't happen very much. <laughs> it was such an honor to have Laura and the board members there. So thank you very much. And, I just love what I do so much, so you're stuck with me for a while. <laughs> okay, uh, library statistics. I just had a quick question. When did we, I know we changed how we were doing some of these things. When did that start, that we can actually start doing some comparisons? Well, 
personally, I suggest um, starting at 22 to 23 because programming, mm -hmm. you didn't start you know, in person or starting as programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until yeah. Um, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that makes sense. I think going forward, yeah. that was a great thing. Yeah. Make the most sense better than, hey, we're doing 300%. That's what we have.
So that was kind of a connection, and it was kind of a dual of, you know, s serving two purposes, but um, I don't know. They get busy, and I understand. Yeah. All right. Um, calendar review. We will, in December, have our fiscal year end, a strategic plan update. Um, anything else that should be added to that? So what the contractors are coming in? Well, yeah, that would be the next agenda. We'll have them in for next time. Okay. Um, public comment? I'd just like to thank Myrna for being your president for last year. Oh. It's a well, lot of work. You're, you're a lot of hard work dealing with new trustees. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you. Good, great job. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. A lot of work. But <laughs> okay. On hold, we have the job descriptions once you finish the Everything else going on. Understood. All right, items for next agenda. We will have Noah and Frost who will be coming and giving us a report. We'll be looking forward to that. Anything else? Do we need to take another look at the committees? We will. Okay, I will. Yeah. I don't know if we need to do that for December. Yeah. No, not for December. Okay. Um, okay, if there's nothing else, I can say we adjourn at 6.18. Thank you, everybody, very much. Good first meeting, Pam.